So as we said in the previous video, we don't like to solve them graphically. Graphically, sometimes you get an approximation. This actually will give me the exact answer. Solving system of linear equations by substitution. Now, the substitution method has a few steps in it. You gotta follow these steps. Step number one, solve for either variable. I didn't say x, I didn't say y. For either variable in terms of the other variable. In one equation. Again, notice the word I use one. That doesn't mean the first one. In you know what? I should take the word one as an either equation. It's up to you. So I don't want you to say one. People think that's the number one equation. In either equation. That's the first step. So for one of the variables, doesn't matter which one, in either of the equations. Once you do that, in the other equation now, the one you didn't solve for it, in the other equation, what do you want to do? Substitute. the expression equal to the variable found. To the variable found. In the previous step. And step number three, once you get to that, solve the resulting equation. Solve the resulting equation for the remaining variable. Sounds like a lot of steps, but it's not really. Once we go through an example, you see that. And now when you solve, you're going to be solving for one of the variables. So you have to give the other variable. So to give the other variable now, that's step number four. Substitute the value found in the previous in step three. The value found in step three. in either equation to do what? To find the solution for the other variable or to solve instead of find to solve for the other variable will make it sound better yep. instead of find to solve for the other variable. And that's it. And the last step, if you want to do it, I never do. I'm guilty. I'll be the first one to admit. Check your answer. I never check my answers. admit that I said I'm guilty step number five maybe once in the bloom when I do check my answer so these are the steps that I use I'm gonna go back to the first example we did in the previous video in the graphing method 
we did this problem and we found the solution to be five comma two. I'm gonna test it and see if this method will give me five comma two also. I'll keep going back and forth to these. I'll wait till you finish writing. There we go. X plus Y equals seven. And X minus Y equals three. It says solve, the first step, solve for either variable. It didn't say X, it didn't say Y. In either equation. So it's up to you. Well, let me solve for one of them. Well, it doesn't really matter. What do you want to solve for? You choose one. X or Y in which equation? Y in which equation? Bottom one. Uh, you picked the wrong one. Not the wrong one, but it's more work. Jamie said solve for Y in this one. Well, to solve for Y, how would you solve for Y? Let's see. What would you do? You take the X there, right? That becomes a negative X. But this is not Y. This is negative Y. So to make it Y, what do you do? Divide by negative 1, so that'll make it y equals what? x minus 3. When Jamie said this, I said you picked the wrong one. I didn't mean it wrong, but I meant like probably the one that's going to be more steps. If you took this one, the first one, for example, and solve for y, just take x there, what do you have? y equals 7 minus x, done. I don't have to divide by minus 1, that extra step. So sometimes you get to think before you decide which one, because one might eliminate one or two steps. But we'll stay with Jamie. He said solve for y. We did in this equation. That's step number one. Step number two. This is step one. In the other equation, now if I use this as step one, what's my other equation? The top one. In the other equation, substitute the expression equal to the variable. So here's my equation. x plus y equals 7. I'm going to substitute. I'm going to take y out and replace it with x minus 3. That's what y is equal to. In place of y, I'm going to put x minus 3. Everyone see that? I took the y out, and I'm replacing y by the expression equal to it. And the next step, step number 3, solve this equation for the remaining variable. If you look at this, there's only one variable now, which is what? X. Solve it for X. What's X plus X? 2X minus 3 equals to 7. Take the minus 3 there. 2X equals what? 7 plus 3. Which is? 10. Or X equals 10 divided by 2, which is 5. Solve the remaining equation for the variable. We did that. That's step number three. Step number four says go to either equation. Grab either one of them. Doesn't matter which one. Let me take the top one. No reason why I picked the top. And replace x by 5 to solve for the other variable. If you put a 5 here, 5 plus what is equal to 7? What is y equal to? So what's my solution? 5 comma 2. X is 5, Y is 2. See him? Was that the same answer when we did it graphically? 5 comma 2. Let's try the other one. Another one we did, another equation, I'll use the same one we did before. We have this one. Let me change color. Green is not my favorite color. 3x minus y equals to 2. And the other equation, 3x minus y equals 4. Step number one, solve for either equation. I mean, for either variable in either equation. Now, if any of you are thinking about solving for x, get that idea out of your head. Why? Yep, if you solve for x, watch this. 
you have what? 3x, take the minus y there, becomes y plus 2. To solve for x, you need to do what? Divide by 3. So x equals y plus 2 divided by 3. Do you really want to use fractions? No. no. So watch what happens instead of solving for x, if you take the top of the same equation now and solve it for y. Take the 3x there, you have what? Negative y equals what? Negative 3x plus 2. I don't want negative y, I want y. What do we do? Divide by negative 1, or just change all the signs. y equals 3x minus 2. Which one looks easier, using this value or using this? The bottom one, no fraction. I know nobody likes fraction. None of you. So I took the top equation and I solved it for y. I solved for both. I want to show you. Actually, this would be a better choice than this if you don't like fractions. That's step number one. Step number two, take the other equation. That becomes my other equation. And replace y by what we solved for. The expression equal to it. 3x minus, what is y equal to? 3x minus 2. 3x minus 3x minus 3x plus 2 equals 4. What's 3x minus 3x? Try again. 3x minus 3x. What's 3 apples minus 3 apples? 0. You ate them all. Gone. What's left? Two. two equals what? How many times you looked in the math book and you saw two, two equals to four? You know that's a false statement. I've never seen that. When you have a statement that's false, that tells you there's no solution. Why? The only way to have no solution if the lines are what? Parallel lines. They never cross each other. So even without graphing it, I know the lines are parallel because this told me there's no solution to that. They will never cross each other. <coughs> and if you look at that problem we did graphically, it says parallel line, no solution. Try the next example. This is actually perfect. I like this problem. We did this. 2x minus 2y equals 6. y equals x minus 3. I want to use substitution again. What's the first step? Solve for one of the variables in either equation. Here's the good news. It did it for you. It's already done. I didn't even have to do the first step. So step one is done. Right there. Step two. Take the other equation, which is my first one now, and replace y by that expression. 2x minus 2 times. In place of y, let's put what? x minus 3. Step number three says, Solve, the remain, solve this equation for the remaining variable. Let's solve it for the remaining variable. 2x minus 2x plus 6 equals 6. What is 2x minus 2x? 0. 6 equals 6. How often 6 equals 6? Every, time. Every single time. That's a true statement. If it's a true statement, that tells you you have the same line when you graph it. And if you have the same line, that means you have infinite solution. All the points on the equation, so when I say infinite solution, y such that y equals x minus 3. 
Any point that will satisfy this will also satisfy that one. And when we did that one, we get infinitely many solutions. Same thing, without a graph in it. And the last one, then we'll go home. This still bugs me because I want to know what the answer to that one. That's what started the whole argument today. What is the answer to this? And I said, I don't know. Graphically, I couldn't tell you. So that's the last one, then we're done. And this is not going to be that pretty here. It doesn't matter what I solve for, I'm still going to be dealing with fractions. So it doesn't really matter. Since I've been solving a lot for y, maybe let me solve this for x in the top equation, just to be different. 4x equals what? 6y plus 4. And to solve for x, I've got to divide by what? 4. x equals 6y plus 4 divided by 4. I could simplify this if I want to, or I can leave it the way it is. Let me leave it. Step number 2, take the other equation. My other equation in this case is the bottom one and replace x by the expression equal to that. Here's the 8. In place of x, I'm going to put 6y plus 4 over 4. Now I'm going to multiply. The 8 is 8 over 1. If you remember, multiplication, when you multiply a fraction, we said you can multiply first and simplify or you can simplify first and multiply. Let me try simplifying first. By 4, this is 1. By 4, this is what? 2. So this will be 2 times 6y plus 4 plus 3y equals 12. What's 2 times 6y? 12y plus what? 8 plus 3y equals 12. 12y and 3y will give me what? 15y plus 8 equals 12. I got to take the 8 to this side, becomes a minus. 15y equals 12 minus 8. What's 12 minus 8? 12 minus 8 is 4. What is y equal to? 4 over 15. No guessing. That's the exact answer. And the last step says once you solve for y or x, grab either equation and solve for the other one. Let me grab the top equation. No reason why the top. I could have picked the bottom. I'm almost done. This is the 4x. I want to solve for x minus 6 in place of y. Let me put 4 over 15. The 6 is 6 over 1. I can simplify that first. I can divide by 3. This is 5. This is 2. So 4x minus. What is 2 times 4? 8 over 5 equals 4. If you're not really a fan of fractions, which is probably none of you, multiply every one of these by the LCD, which is 5. What's 5 times 4? 20x minus the 5 will cancel each other out. That's an 8. What's 4 times 5? 20. Take the 8 to that side. 20x equals what? 20 plus 8, which is 28. And to solve for x is 28 divided by 20. You can divide by 4. That's what? 7 over 5. 
1.4 happens to be, by the way. Yep. So x is 7 over 5, and y is 4 over 15. So this will give me the answer, the exact solution. No guessing, nothing.